The ANET A8 sure is a cheap 3D printer, but there are some safety concerns that should be tackled before attempting to build any props or costumes with this low cost machine. Hey there, fellow maker, welcome to Prop 3D. You're looking to the world of prop making using 3D printing. I'm Bill and today I'm gonna go over the safety upgrades I've made to the ANET A8 3D printer. This is the $165 printer that my wife and I put together just a couple of weeks ago. Our goal with this project is to build a full on replica prop helmet using this printer as cheaply as possible. But I also wanna do that as safely as possible and since we assembled this thing, some concerns have come up. I started doing some research into some of the upgrades we could do to make this machine better at printing and what I stumbled on was a bunch of videos on YouTube explaining how some of these cheaper 3D printers are less than safe right out of the box. And thus I have come to a conclusion. If you purchase a super cheap assemble it yourself 3D printer, then you are obligated to becoming an expert on how to operate it safely. Out of the box, there are several things about this machine in particular and a bunch of other cheaper ones that are a little bit iffy and potentially a fire hazard. If you're a total beginner, like you're a prop maker and you're just getting into 3D printing and you assume that you're gonna buy this machine, put it together, then print willy-nilly all day long without any concerns, well, you've got another thing coming. So what's so unsafe about this machine? Consider your toaster oven. Now the nozzle on that 3D printer gets just as hot as this toaster oven. Would you run your toaster for a solid 10 hours, unsupervised, at night while you sleep? Probably not. However, that's a common thing to do with a 3D printer. Therefore, I think that printer ought to be a paragon of electronic safety, and the ANET A8 is not. For example, it has no power switch, no way to turn it on and off without just yanking the cord from the wall. So as far as I'm concerned, a fused power switch is a mandatory upgrade for this printer. There are, of course, a few other concerns that I will be addressing. And these upgrades, which I'm considering mandatory, include things like some power tools you'll need, like a soldering iron, potentially a drill, as well as some additional electrical components. And all of those things will be added to the total cost overall when I do my final analysis on this project. All right, I've got a bunch of videos that I watched. Those will all be linked down below if you wanna check it out as well as all the tools. So be sure to check those out if you're gonna buy a printer like this. Some of those upgrades required printed files. Those will be linked down below. And of course I printed them all on the A8. Also, I really need to thank you guys for watching our assembly video and listing a whole bunch of upgrades that you insisted we do. So I've tried my best to take all of those into consideration for this safety upgrade video and the next video, which will be um, stuff that you can do to the machine to make it print better. So thank you guys for all of your wonderful insight. If you think I've missed anything, well, you know, just go ahead and drop a comment down below. All right, thank you guys so much for hearing me out. Without further ado, here are the rest of the safety upgrades that I've made to the ANET A8. Many of you guys recommended that I solder the heated bed wires directly to the plate, so I did that. First, I took a photo of the wires to make sure I reconnected everything correctly. Then I took the bed off and off camera, I did a rather poor job of removing the crappy connector that ships with the bed. Then I soldered the wires back in place permanently. While I was under the hood, I unhooked the Y-axis belt and flipped over the carriage. This lets the connector for the belt hang a bit lower and apparently this leads to less wear and tear on the belt. Not a safety upgrade, but I was there so I did it. The bed was then reattached to the carriage, but I turned it 90 degrees counterclockwise before screwing it down. I did a quick test to make sure that the bed still heated up. The red LED on the bed means that it's got power and it's heating up, so I got that going for me. The next safety upgrade was a more robust power supply unit and that switch that I told you about. The upgraded power supply can handle more current and it has a fan to keep it cool. This is worth every single penny. To attach that fused power switch to the power supply, I printed an available switch cover, but I found that it wouldn't fit on this slightly larger new power supply. So I whipped up my own Infusion 360 and printed that out. This cover holds the switch in place and it has screw holes to hold it tight to the power supply shell. I found some old computer case screws that did the trick. Now I had to modify it a little bit with some clippers to feed some wires through. I have since updated the file to be a little bit more elegant. 
Files for that cover can be found in the description of this video. The wiring for the new power supply was different than the old one. I checked and double checked that I had the leads connected to the proper terminals according to the symbols on the new power supply. Then I wired up the switch according to an example photo that I found online. The wiring for all of this work was cut from the original power cord of the ANET A8. I also attached some lugs on the end of these wires to make it easier to attach to the power supply. When it was all said and done, it all looked kind of like this. To attach the new supply to the frame of the printer, I used masking tape to transfer the screw holes from the back of that new power supply to the acrylic frame and then I drilled in some new holes. Then I used some of the printer's supplied screws to attach the supply. The next upgrade was a MOSFET for the heated bed. The purpose of the MOSFET is to send the current that would normally go through the main board through the MOSFET instead. Not only is this a performance upgrade, but it should prolong the life of the main board and decrease the chance of melting and burning components. I'll link to a better video that describes how the MOSFET is added to this system, but basically drilled some holes, printed some tubes to hold it off the frame, wired it to the heated bed in the main board, and finally screwed it to the frame. After a quick check again to see that the board was still heating up as planned, I could move on to the next bit of goodness. Now I plan on adding two full sets of drag chains to the x-axis and the y-axis, but for now, I just wanted to put that one part of the y-axis on where it connects to the heated bed and that wiring that I poorly soldered down. That particular part was screwed down to the carriage from below to hold it in place. Then I tucked the wires away and finally zip tied them to the new part. This would keep those wires from flexing at my crappy soldering joints during operation. I quickly found out though that this new part sat proud of the frame by about 1 16th of an inch, keeping the bed from sliding all the way back. In a tiny fit of rage, I removed the good portion of the acrylic frame with my rotary tool. This added gap allowed the bed with its extended wire holder to slide freely all the way from the front to the back of the 3D printer. The last quick upgrade was something to help the included spool holder do its job better. The thin threaded rod doesn't do a great job of rolling out the filament and I just happen to have some large bearings on hand. I believe these are for my bandsaw. So I added those and a PVC pipe to the rod to make the spindle roll with greater ease. This should put a lot less stress on all of the motors, including the extruder motor on the printer. And thus concludes the mandatory, as far as I'm concerned, safety upgrades to the ANET A8 3D printer. And while I do feel it is an awful lot safer, I still have another MOSFET I'm gonna try and hook up to the uh, hot end on the extruder and I move my smoke detector above the printer because I still don't really trust this thing. Also consider that I spent probably a good five hours working on this machine getting it to where it is right now and that doesn't include the 3D printing. In fact while all those parts were printing I worked on other projects but I like to be in the same room just to keep an eye on it. Again all of those upgraded parts were printed on the A8 and I used a Hashbox PLA. The new components cost between 30 and 40 bucks, so you could include that to the overall cost of the machine, and that puts it over you know, 200 bucks. That plus the time investment on the assembly and the upgrades starts to kind of change the equation on how much you might be willing to spend, both time-wise and money-wise, on a machine like this. Basically, you need to start considering what your time is worth. And I'll tell you what, that big CR10 that everybody's talking about is starting to sound more attractive every single day. Something else to consider too, I used a bunch of tools like a soldering iron and a drill and some pliers and other stuff I had around. So if you're just getting into this, those are all gonna have to be purchased. Of course, I've never regretted buying new tools. Well, I'll tell you what, I feel a lot better about attempting to print a helmet with this machine, but I'm not quite ready to do that. I've got some modifications that I'm gonna make so that this will print better, more higher quality prints. So that'll be coming up in the next video. Hey, thank you so much for checking this video out and hanging with me in the shop today. Hopefully some of these improvements will be helpful for you with whatever 3D printing kit you're trying to put together. Like I said, I had a bunch of help from different videos I watched. Those will be linked down below. Plus all of the 3D files I use will also be linked down below so you can go grab them for yourself. Also note, I sliced everything in Cura and I printed it all in PLA at 0.3 millimeters layer height. Again, if you have any safety or structural upgrades you think I should know about, please let me know in the comments down below. Having the hive mind working on this project with me has proven invaluable, so thank you guys so much for all of the insight. All right, I got a ton more printing to do to get this thing helmet worthy. I'm gonna get working on that. Thank you guys again for hanging out with me, and we'll see you all in the next build. 
happy printing. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.